It's the voice of a man. Hello? With only seconds to live. When cops arrive at the house, it's ransacked. The scene has all the markings of a robbery gone wrong. Video games, televisions, jewelry, clothing uh, had been placed in bags. But a bloody path also leads to a grisly murder scene. Hello? Landy Martinez was raised in Miami after moving from Cuba with his family, and at 18 years old came out as a gay man. I think didn't quite knew what he was in the beginning when we first met, and then kind of just, okay, I'm gay, here I am, let's go. After high school, Landy moved to St. Petersburg, finding work at an assisted living facility where he met Gail Rigg. They would soon become best friends. Landy was a great guy, you know, did his job really well, helped out the residents, and he was an awesome person. But there had to be more to life than work. Landy wanted to meet someone special. It didn't take long to find someone looking for the same. Landy met Jose online and then drove to Miami to go pick him up. Enter Jose Adame, a charming Latin lover who swept Landy off his feet. They lived together where they rented a bedroom from uh, a couple. And in that residence, there was another couple that lived there. The relationship seemed okay, you know, normal. Me and Jose hung out when we first met because Landy had to go to work. But Gail says things soon took a dark turn, starting with a disturbing offer by Jose. He asked my 11-year-old son if he wanted to go back to the apartment and smoke weed and watch pornos. Landy was there when the incident happened, and he was highly pissed. It was enough to make the steamy romance fizzle out. Soon, Landy said goodbye to Jose and moved on to find love with 26-year-old Jonathan Galicia. Her relationship between Jonathan and Landy seemed, I guess, more caring, loving. You saw more on Facebook of, like, the cutesy little things, like the hearts in the sand and, you know, stuff like that. But cops say Landy's old housemates still had an uneasy feeling about Jose. They were fearful of him. They put up security cameras. So they had access on their smartphones to the security cameras. With an extra layer of protection, everything seemed calm. But out of camera shot, was there an ominous cloud of trouble brewing? Jose was jealous and capable of creating problems for Landy. Jose devised this plan to stalk or harass uh, Landy. Stung by rejection, it seemed Jose wanted Landy to pay for his broken heart, quite literally. Soon, Jose began racking up tickets by speeding past a camera with a car Landy and Jose registered in both their names. The tickets went to Landy because Landy's name was on first, demanding payment and with the threat of suspending the driver's license. But not to be outdone, Landy concocted a plan of his own. He contacted Jose and said, hey, I'd like to get back together with you. Let's go out and see if we can't reconcile a relationship. So in the meantime, Landy went down to the DHSMV and, perfectly legal, removed Jose from the title. The two agreed to meet at a fast food joint, Jose thinking they're getting back together, but Landy with something else in mind. When he got there, Landy called the sheriff's office, requested a deputy to come up. I want him and his stuff out of the vehicle. The former lover had no choice but to hand over the truck. Landy then drove off, leaving Jose fuming alone in the parking lot. I suspect that Jose was very angry for several reasons. He, he thinks he's going to get back with the uh, man that he loves. He loses his vehicle on top of that. And on top of that, he's stranded in a parking lot in St. Pete, Florida, where he has no family or residence. But at least Landy and his new love, Jonathan, could find peace. Or maybe not. Jonathan said, look, I'm, I'm worried that you're going to go back to Jose. 
All the drama with Jose soon bothered Jonathan, leaving him insecure about their future. Landy says, it's over between me and Jose. He says, I can prove it. To do that, Landy set up a secret three-way phone call between his old lover and his new one. Jonathan silently listens. He's listening to uh, Landy tell Jose that their relationship is over with again, that he's moved on. He has a new boyfriend. And at the end of that phone call is when Landy says, oh, by the way, he's in listening to this whole phone call. If Jose is embarrassed by being tricked, he plays it cool. Jose told Jonathan that he was, him and Landy were through. There was nothing to worry about. There was nothing to be jealous of. That uh, he had moved on. He found a new boyfriend that bought him a red Lexus. And he had sent a picture of a red Lexus with him posing on it like a model. Jonathan accepts all this, and when he says when they hang up the phone, it's amicable. But the next morning, Jonathan gets a bizarre text, a message completely opposite from what was said in the phone call. The text is from Landy, saying he changed his mind. He wants to get back together with Jose. The text said, listen, I don't know that I want to be with you anymore. I've thought about this. I really love Jose. I miss Jose. I'm going to go back to Jose. And now, a three-way lover's tiff is about to explode. Landy knew what was going to happen to him. They want to kill me, hurry up, please! Next, a desperate call to 911. Who's holding Landy hostage? Everyone's a suspect. Is it the ex or the new boyfriend? Well, I was like, wait a minute, did he do it? Or was this a robbery turned violent? Things had been taken out of the normal places, and someone was preparing to take those items. Everyone's a suspect. Did Landy have enemies at work? Did he, you know, a relationship gone bad? Uh, could this have been over money? Could this have been over drugs? <laughs> <laughs>